Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I'll be your host. And in this episode, Kevin Close talks with us about booking an Adventures by Disney vacation. On our panel this week, we have our experts, uh, agent consultant, Tracy Heinrichs. Hi, everyone. Client Services Manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Kevin Close. Hello, everybody. Back in the production f- facility, our producer, Craig Williams. Hello. Well, thank you guys for being here. Um, if you've watched the show at all, if you've followed us from the beginning, you probably know by now that we are all very big fans of the Adventures by Disney Vacation. Um, we've been on several. Everybody in this room has been on at least one. Um, and it's just a great way to travel, and we love it. However, what we think is, I think is very interesting is that anytime we talk about it, I get the question, what is that? What's an Adventures by Disney vacation? Or I've never heard of that. And I think I'm almost shocked that beyond perhaps the hardcore Disney community, that Adventures by Disney is not a well-known product. There's not a lot of advertising. Yeah, that's part of it too, for sure. But I used to have folks in the park, like DVC folks, talking about it, but I don't even see those anymore. Right. And we think it's such a wonderful way to travel, and we you know, try to convince as many people as possible to take an Adventures by Disney vacation. But again, it's one of those things that um, it's not an easy thing to talk about, to describe. It's not a one-sentence type of answer when people ask us, what's Adventures by Disney about? Um, they have so many itineraries out there, and there are so many ins and outs of actually booking one. We thought it would be a great opportunity for Kevin to talk with us about it and help us plan our Adventures by Disney trip. So what do you got for us, Kevin? I think whenever you book any trip, I well, that's not true. If you're booking a Disney World trip, you know where you want to go. I think with Adventures by Disney, the first decision you have to make is where you'd like to visit. Where do you want to go? Um, they go all over the world. There's Asia, Europe, South America. There are trips in the States. They do add-ons with cruises. Mm-hmm. North so, America, South America. Now they're doing river cruises. Mm-hmm. You know, their offerings just expand, and it's it's great for us because we love to travel, but it becomes more and more confusing for people. So the thing, first thing I would suggest is you figure out where you want to go. What part of the world do you want to see? And the question I get asked a lot is, why do you want? It, why would I travel with Disney? And I would explain that you trust Disney with theme parks. You trust Disney with cruise line. What this is is this is a Disney guided tour. And I get the question all the time, is this all aimed at children or is this, is there too much mouse involved? And I would tell you that no, it is not aimed at children. Children are welcome. And when there are children involved, they are embraced embraced, and and things are dedicated to Mm -hmm. them. But this is not specifically a tour for children. This is also not overly Disney-fied. There's the Disney level of service. There's the Disney quality. We talk about traveling in the Disney bubble. Disney opens doors that sometimes aren't opened um, for other tour groups. However, you're not going to get on the bus and Mickey's not going to greet you. You know, there's not going to be a a character breakfast. Chip and Dale, do not move your luggage. Right. This is this is about being immersed in the culture and experiencing the things that that destination has to offer. Right. After you've decided where you want to go, then you have to decide when you can travel. Now, keep in mind that some itineraries are season-specific. Some they don't do in the winter because the trips are up into mountainous areas, so they're afraid of inclement weather. So there are seasons where certain things take place. There are some that are actually just in the winter. There's the Wyoming winter wonderland, Mm -hmm. hoopla doobla. Our favorite trip is the um, Rome, (laughs) Florence, and Venice. And even then, they don't usually do that one much past Christmas because there is a ride out into Tuscany. And Tuscany, we've all been up the side of that mountain. Right. No one wants to do that on a slippery road. Exactly. So you just have to decide when you can travel. Um, If you are one of those people who think this might be aimed at children, Disney Adventures by Disney does offer adults-only trips. And they're specific... Uh, departure dates where it is listed as adults only. A lot of times those are in what they call the shoulder season, the beginning of the season or the end of the season. But for instance, they just started doing the Walt Disney World adventure a couple of weeks ago, and there were no adults only adventures 
ad- adults only departures listed at the beginning. They've since gone back and suggested that some or listed some of those as adults only trips. Usually, the adults only ch- trips happen when kids are just starting school or perhaps at the end of a school season. So when parents normally wouldn't take a kid out, right. it's not like, oh, I wish my kid could go then. It's a natural time. For One no of the nice things trips. is if you're interested in knowing how many children are on any given trip that you're interested in, that's it, that's information that ABD will share. They'll also share the ages of children. So if you're looking to travel with children, they will, while they're not specific whether they're male or female, they will tell me what age groups children fall into. So you can find out if there are other kids your age. That's really great for a parent who's traveling with kids who thinks, well, I want my my child to be with other kids so that they have something to do and someone to hang out with their own age. You know, I think a lot of adults are concerned about the kids are going to be stuck on a trip with just adults. When will they have a good time if they don't have their peers around them? So now we've decided where you want to go and when you can travel. So now we're getting ready to book your reservation. ABD requires a 10% deposit that recently changed and that's 10% per person. So it is is actually, uh, just want to add it's 10% of the total amount. It's 10% of your adventure fare. When we talk about Disney cruise line, the deposit is of the cruise fare. It's your total uh, adventure amount. 10% of the the cost. Um, Your deposit is due upon booking. And your deposit is fully refundable for 14 days. After 14 days, your deposit becomes non-refundable. So ABD has gotten really good about the idea that things do change. So they are willing to let you move a date to a different departure as long as you're before your final payment. Once final payment is due, nothing gets moved without a penalty. Um, There's some things you know, some, some things we need to know. Um, ABD, like Disney Cruise Line, the price increases as the trip fills up. So every once in a while, there's a jump, and it can be a sizable jump. I've seen them jump $900, $1,000 at a clip. So you're going to get the best price if you book early. ABD rewards uh, travelers who have completed two adventures. There's an Adventures Insider Club. And the promotion they are running for 2016 is you would get, if you've completed two adventures, you get $300 off the cost of your adventure per reservation. In the past, they have done $100 per adventurer. And depending on the size of your party, it could go either way. You might do better off with $100 per person, or if there's only two of you, you do better with the $300 per reservation. I think that's this great. Year it's per reservation. I I think it's great that they sort of have built in, it's not a tremendous discount, but at least least it's a loyalty program. We often get on Disney's case for saying, you know, why don't you have a loyalty program? Why aren't you rewarding the people going over and over again? Adventures by Disney does that. Disney Cruise Line does that with the Castaway Club program. So I think this is fantastic. Now, the other nice thing is Adventures by Disney, um, every once in a while, especially when they release a new itinerary, has been known to send out a gift. When they did... To their adventure insiders, people who the have people traveled who are before. The people the adventure insiders program. The people in the U.S. And that's not our fault. That's, yeah. a, that, that's no, Canada's but fault. But it's a, it's an a, it's an important distinction. It is. They won't send. They can't send yeah. things to um, Canada. And when we were trying to award prizes at one time to people who lived in Canada, I did some research on it, and they consider it if you won a prize, you had entered a lottery. Yeah, the solicitation right. basically. Yeah. I mean, ABD used to send out. Their, the photos that were taken on CDs, and they wouldn't, they couldn't be delivered in Canada right. either. So, this is not Canadian citizens, uh, Australian citizens are not eligible for the Adventure Insider program. It's not something I can get around. Some of the gifts they've given out. Mm-hmm. Um, we got one when the Greece when they started going to Greece, they sent us a book of um, fables and mythology uh when they teased scotland we got a copy of the book for brave that's right the disney book from the movie that we got brave uh we recently got a copy of the sound of music when they started talking about going back to austria and for christmas last year everybody uh that was part of the program got a picture frame yeah so they uh, do they do send things that occasionally i even got a uh one point in time they sent like a 25 dollar barnes and noble gift card and said just 
use this as inspiration to find your next vacation. So, so there are some I think that's awesome, little man. perks. I mean, I don't think anybody's booking an expensive vacation to get a sound and music video, but it's a nice surprise, especially when you don't know yeah, about it. For sure. Um, if you're a DVC member, you are guaranteed the lowest pricing. People talk about a DVC discount, and that's really not really what it is. There's no discount involved in being a DVC member, but as I explained, pricing increases as the trip begins to fill. A DVC member can book at any time during the course of the the season or whenever it's the trip is running and still get the opening day pricing. They are guaranteeing they are guaranteed the lowest pricing available whenever they book. I want to say something about that. One of the things we've heard from DVC members is now that there's a 10% deposit I'm just going to wait and book a little bit later because I can get the first rate, the tier one or tier zero rate for the trip. And the problem is, though, is that if the trip fills up and sells out, you're going to miss out on the trip you want. So I realize why people say that and would do that. But I still suggest if there's a trip you really want to go on and you're not flexible, you should really book what you want. The other the next thing on my list is availability for these trips, especially for larger parties, can become tough. These trips are usually, the allotment is usually booked on doubles and triples. So finding a room that will hold four people. Double and triple occupancy. Double and triple occupancy, I'm sorry. Um, Quad occupancy, four people, is hard to come by. Especially in Europe. Many of the trips, many of the European adventures require two rooms. So if you're an adult and two children, that's something to consider. Do they um, guarantee any departures? There's many departures. They're on our website. Um, we will have the link in the show notes page. I don't have it with me, but on the Dreams Unlimited Travel website, we show which departures are guaranteed. Okay, so they are still doing that. Yeah. Huh? If you go to at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, if you click on the top menu under Adventures by Disney, go to itineraries. When you see the list of itineraries, the ones that are guaranteed have a little asterisk next to them. I guess we should explain what a guaranteed departure is. Uh, what happens is Disney Adventures by Disney waits until the trip starts to fail before they guarantee it. I would love to tell you that I know what the equation is for when they guarantee a trip, but I don't. We used to think it was 15 people, but that's not necessarily the case. So it's apparently a certain... In my estimation, it's a certain dollar figure that they figure it is right. profitable for them to and send a trip. And I think each trip probably has its own minimum. Yeah. Right. So based on whatever their arrangement is with that particular area or provider, hotels or whatever the case right. is. So a guaranteed trip means that if you book into this, this trip, there's no there's no chance that it's going to cancel unless there's some major political coup in the neighborhood you're going. Um, the trip is guaranteed. Or a weather and, you know act of God weather kind of stuff. So there are a list of trips that are guaranteed. So if that's something that concerns you, you can see which ones have already been. And on the flip side of that, just to let people know that Adventures by Disney can cancel a trip, even though you're deposited on the trip, they would give you a deposit back, but it's still something that they reserve the right to do. And so you have to be aware of that. If you don't pick a guaranteed trip, it could cancel. Few and far between from what we've seen, but unfortunately it does happen. And this is not unique to Adventures by Disney. I know all other escorted tours that I've sold at other uh, places I've worked, they have the same, the exact same policy. Some have a little bit more lenient policy yeah, than and ABD, some will have but... a little bit more um, guaranteed departures. But overall, though, there's other companies, again, with just more out there, like just more destinations kind of throw a lot of stuff out instead of the specialized stuff that ABD does. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that it, it's, it's kind of an industry thing. It's not really just an ABD yeah, thing. No, no. So if you're looking for a room for four, booking earlier rather than later is sometimes easier. Um, ABD usually offers pre and post nights for their adventures. There are some adventures where that's just not feasible. But if you're thinking that you would like to arrive a day early or stay later at your last uh, spot uh, before you come home, I would add your pre and post nights as early as possible. ABD has an allotment of pre nights and an allotment of post nights. And once those are added, once those are spoken for, they sometimes can be difficult to get. And I would recommend that everybody who's traveling and changing time zones regardless of which direction you're going, I would suggest that you um, book a pre-night so that you have a day to acclimate to the time zone you're in 
and be ready because adventures by Disney trips are usually very active and you're going to want to be ready to start. Let's talk a little bit about the re- another reason why this is important is that the adventures by Disney trip generally starts with you being greeted at the airport and being taken to the hotel and then that night's at dinner. So while there's time on your own, there's not a lot of time on your own right. to explore the city that you've, you've landed in. So if you have a pre-night or pre-day, two or three of them, it really lets you sort of acclimate. So you're not just hitting the ground running. Okay, we're going to go from A to B to C. You have time to sort of sightsee a little bit. That's what we love to do. Can when I we tell you, on our tours yeah. as well that we've done, I know when we did it this in Ireland, we looked at adding a pre-night with ABD. And I got the price. And I thought, huh. So then I went and I looked on my own. And the price was a little bit less. But then I started comparing. If I book this pre-night with ABD... I still had my airport transfers. They were still greeting me at the airport. Um, I was still getting breakfast included. Right. I also was able to stay in the same room right. as opposed to booking it on my own and then the next day having to change. Now, we're going to talk about transfers. That's a little bit further down on my list. That has changed a little bit, so I will address that somewhere else. Oh, right. But the breakfast yeah. and things like that. The other thing and is... And not changing when, rooms is good because a lot of times you're the rate you might find might be for a different level of room. Right. Than what also, is what Disney the is rate that ABD room. gives you includes uh, taxes, transfers, and in most cases, breakfast. Right. Not all cases, mind you, but in most cases, breakfast. Um, Pre and post nights, going back to them for just a second. Pre and post nights, even if you add them when you book your adventure, are completely cancelable up until final payment. Those are just added to your balance due. They don't have to be prepaid. We just add it to the bottom line. And you have up until final payment to make a decision yes or no on your pre-night. There's no penalty for canceling them. So I tell guests who ask and those who don't, it's better to have them and not need them right. than to need them and not be able to get them. Because then you got to think about now you're going to look into airfare. Well, guess what? I might be able to save a couple hundred bucks if I come in the night before. Always good to have those days and then shave them off at the end. Exactly. Uh, and even when ABD does sell out their allotment, I can request that ABD ask for another night. And usually we can. But there are circumstances where that's just not possible. So it's, um, it's better to add it at the beginning. Um, we talked about guaranteed departures. I have a list here, so I'm trying to make sure I cover everything. Uh, there is a payment schedule with Adventures by Disney. Once you've gotten your information, uh, payment is due... Uh, deposit is due at booking, so you pay your 10%, uh, and then you have until 120 days before your departure to pay in full. Now, you can make one lump sum, in, excuse me, you can make one lump sum payment at 120 days, or you can make interim payments throughout the course of your waiting period. You know, I have guests who, you know, pay $1,000 every couple of weeks, so you have your, uh, the option is yours. You can pay it off how you like. Uh, one of the things I was asked to talk about is travel insurance. Travel insurance is kind of complicated no matter what you're talking about, but ABD has an insurance policy that's offered through them, and it is 8% of your adventure cost. Your insurance will cost 8% of your adventure cost per person. If you add and pay in full for your Adventures by Disney travel insurance within 14 days of booking your adventure... All pre-existing conditions are covered. That's a big deal in the travel insurance industry. I don't deal with that with any other product. Pre-existing conditions usually aren't covered. ABD offers the pre-existing condition coverage, but you have to book it and pay for it within 14 days. After that, travel insurance can be added any time up until final payment. Final payment is your last day to add travel insurance, at least through Adventures by Disney. There are other options out there like insuremytrip.com and things like that. Did you mention the, the cost of insurance? Did I miss that? It's 8% of your adventure fare, so it's different for each adventure. Right. And it's going to be different now. Um, also the, uh, we talked about this with Disney cruise line. Also, if your adventure, your deposit for your adventure is 8% of your adventure fare. If you add pre nights and travel insurance and airfare, not airfare, I'm sorry, that's not true. Your, in, your deposit increases. So your deposit increases as the price of your adventure. Now your adventure includes your travel insurance and pre night, pre and post nights. 
they consider that part of that. Airfare is not. It does your insur- your travel insurance does or your uh, deposit doesn't go up because of travel because, because of, of airfare. airfare. Oh my god, they get stuck. Um, transfers. In the past, ABD offered transfers from the airport to your hotel, and you that was on the day of the adventure. Or if you booked a pre-night through Adventures by Disney, the transfers were included from the airport to the Adventure Hotel. ABD has changed their transfer policy, and within reason, I know that's vague, ABD will pick you up at the airport and bring you to the Adventure Hotel. If you're staying someplace other than the Adventure Hotel, it is your responsibility to get there on your own. Now, I know in Europe, this is a good deal because usually the, the airport is quite a bit out of town. I'm going to use Rome as an example. It's 30 or 40 minutes outside of Rome. So what they would do is, I'm guessing that you would be staying someplace close to the Adventure Hotel. They will pick you up and bring you there, but they will bring you to the hotel that they know. Then you would have to make your way to the other hotel and then back again. On the end, the transfers on the end... Adventures by Disney will only transfer from the hotel you're staying at. That's part of the adventure. If you book post nights on that trip, they will transfer you from there. If at the ad- end of your adventure, you move to a different hotel, transfers are then on your own. So, um, did that make sense? It makes sense in my head, but I understand. But you it. do it every single right, day. Because I deal with it all the time. It is. I mean, you know, there's there are limitations with what they can and can't do. But the nice part is, is they've kind of changed it. Right. Because they before used, they used to say, mm-hmm. no transfers. If you didn't book right. a pre with us or you're not coming on the day of, no transfers. We can't help you. Yep. Now they're saying we can still help you, but this is the concession. Yep. We're going to take you to this same hotel because that's where our contract is to. And then from there you can... You've Move also about. found some flexibility in things like, you know, if someone takes an alternate form of transportation, you might be able to go and get them, say, at a train station or something Correct. like right. that. ABD is so. really good about trying to make sure that you, you're you're greeted. Um, in certain places in Europe, I can have transfers come to the train station and things like that. Our last backstage magic, um, we came in the night before and we're staying in an airport hotel. And they picked us up at that airport hotel instead of us having to go back to the airport to meet the transfer. So they and that was something that they offered. Right, they're very they're usually very good about this. Now, um, in the past, John and I have arrived early and rented a car, and you rent the car at the airport and you travel around during the day. And then what we do is we return the car on the day the adventure starts, and ABD will pick you up at the airport uh, and take you to the hotel. Something else nice that they do is if you're doing a backstage magic and you want to go to Disneyland before the adventure starts, they will pick you up. They will provide transfers from the Grand Floridian to the Lowe's Hotel in Hollywood. That's a long Grand transfer. Grand Californian. He does this all the time. <laughs> uh, the Grand Floridian. That, they that will, is very no. generous of them. Yeah. I think it, it's only an hour. What's that you're so excited about? It is not the Grand Floridian. They are not coming here to get you. They will pick you up at the Grand Californian. He, he and, does it the other way, too. He calls this one the Grand Californian. <laughs> I do. It's... Um, so I can arrange a transfer for you from the Grand Californian to the Hollywood, the hotel in Hollywood. That's possible also. That's only the day the adventure starts, though. All right. Some of the uh, less hardware kind of stuff. Um, packing. Now, you have to consider the fact that ABD asks you to bring one suitcase, one carry-on, Per person. And that is because in many of the trips there is motor coach transportation. And if it's a full trip, too much luggage isn't going to fit underneath the bus. So that's the reason they ask you to do it. I have found that most people are very aware of that. I also have found that most people don't do it, but it is a concern. So Plan accordingly. They Do- also provide uh, really neat packing lists, I found, for each adventure. Right. And I actually found them to be quite helpful I would, and, and specific to a certain come, adventure. Yeah, these come in your pre-trip booklet, mm-hmm. information mm-hmm. about that. I want to go back to the luggage thing. 
I don't want anybody to be worried that, oh, no, they, uh, they've told me only one bag. I brought two. There's no room. They're going to throw my bag out. They would not do that. They're very, very liberal with, you know, they'll help you out as best you can. It's just a suggestion because the luggage transfer occurs within an adventure from place to place. It's very hard for the people to handle all that luggage And there's a, on and sometimes the a space issue. Yeah, for sure. So, Can I go back and ask you a question? I don't know. Maybe you're going to cover this. Um, with airfare. Do you book airfare through Adventures by Disney, or is it kind of like cruise where you? Adventures by Disney. I know they uses use published air, which is published air, which is better for sure. Yes, it's not bulk air. Right. When I request an air co- quote, I deal with a person at Disney, mm-hmm. and I tell them how many people are traveling. I tell them what airport they're looking to um, fly in and out of, and I am given a quote. <clears throat> now. Um, it is, you cannot use your mileage to right. book this. You can't use frequent flyer miles. Uh, you can't upgrade. That's at, once you've booked your airfare, if you have mileage, miles and you want to upgrade, that's something you would have a reservation through and whatever airline this was booked through. But you would have a seat assignment and you would have a reservation number and you would know what your schedule was. Where bulk air, you're just paying a price and then you're assigned information later. No, you know exactly at the time of booking. Now, one of the things about airfare that's kind of interesting is you're welcome to book on your own. If by chance there's a possibility that your trip got canceled, having your airfare booked through Adventures by Disney is better in that situation because then they will help you get a refund on your airfare. If you've booked on your own, you are then on your own. They will... um, They offer a compensation though, right? If you've booked your own air. If you book another adventure, they will help you with change fees. But not if it's completely canceled, you decide not to go. And air with them is, uh, it's paid at the time of booking. Airfares, there's no way to hold airfare. Right. Just like if you looked for yourself, there's no way to hold airfare for you. Yeah. It's only, once you're given a quote, it's only valid until it's paid. Now, one of the nice things is, is if you're one of those people who wants to make their own airfare schedule, you can go out and pick exactly what you want and let me know. And I can go through Adventures by Disney and book exactly what you chose. Usually at exactly the same rate, you you know airfares fluctuate, so I have to deal with the fact that that takes place, but we can get the same rate you got. Like, we we prefer to fly Delta. We prefer to fly in at certain times and out of certain times because it's convenient to us. So Kevin will go and find the airfare, the, the flight schedule that meets our needs, call them up and say, listen, I found this. It's Delta flight, such and such, and they'll book it for us through Adventures by Disney. At the same price I would have paid right, if the I same booked price. myself online. So we covered packing. Um, the only thing I actually would add on to the packing is because uh, he stumbled into it on the Central Europe trip. Uh, pretty much a majority of the people that were on that trip, it was their first time. So they had no idea how to pack besides the guidelines that were in the book. And, of course, they tell you to bring some formal uh, clothes for nicer dinners. However, it turned out that we ended up never really having time to change so that all those extra clothes that we brought, uh, Mm -hmm. I think Kylie and I each brought about maybe six or seven outfits we didn't need. Uh, It could have been avoided by if we might have even went on like disboards and kind of read up from a last person's trip to find out little tips like that. So you look at, look at something like the backstage magic where you transition from Hollywood to to Disneyland and they talk about we're going to go to Steakhouse 55 or someplace else for dinner and you think well that's great I'm going to go and change you arrive you hit the ground you're lucky if you get your luggage in your room exactly before you run back out to that dinner I would tell anybody that there in any of the adventures that we've done or I've booked for other people as far as the planned activities you're not in need of anything fancier than for men a pair of khakis and a collared shirt I think that's as formal as I would tell anybody that they needed what would be the female equivalent of khakis and a collared shirt. Khakis and a collared shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's why she's yeah. the professional. That's right. It's the same idea. Like, like slacks in the summer, uh, dress capris. Right. You know, so something that's 
just slightly elevated from casual, but you could really, in a lot of the places we were, casual was okay too. Jeans. I don't, yeah. I take a pair of jeans with me and that's what I wear. Resort now, casual. Resort casual. Now, I would tell you that if during your on your own time that you choose to go to a restaurant where something fancier than that would be required, that would be up to you. And this is kind of like what we were talking about on cruises. Some people do naturally dress up more for dinner yeah. than others do. That's just not something that I'm in the habit of doing. But there were people on our Ireland trip who did dress up a little bit more. And I enjoyed seeing them. And it certainly didn't affect, and I'm sure what I was wearing didn't affect them. But again, it was there was enough variety that... Um, it's really up to you. Yeah. But when you get this packing list, um, it, it's a suggestion. I, the word formal wear, as far as in Adventures by Disney, to me is just... Probably not necessary. I would tell you that if it rains, chances are very good that Adventures by Disney will give you a poncho. There's no need to bring your own unless there's something special about yours. Umbrellas, ponchos, they're very well prepared. They're mm -hmm. always there to help out. Uh, I would tell you that you should prepare for an inclement weather change. I would go no matter where you're going. I would bring a sweatshirt or a windbreaker or something, even if you're going during warm weather. Weather can change. Uh, I would also suggest that if there's a possibility that it will be hotter than you expect, that you take that into consideration, too. I mean, I've gone places where all I had was long sleeve shirts and long pants, and it got very warm. So you kind of have to pack for across the board. Talk about gratuities. That's something that seems to uh, trip people up quite a bit. Gratuities for everything involved in your trip. Are included in the cost. When you get on the bus, the bus driver is given a gratuity. When you get to a hotel, the luggage handlers are given a gratuity. By Adventures by, by Disney. By Adventures by as Disney. As part of your cost. The right. only gratuities not included in your adventure are those to your travel guides. The two Adventures by Disney guides that accompany every trip, gratuities are not included in the cost of your adventure for them. ABD suggests 6 to $9 per day per person in your party so if there's two of you they would expect they would suggest not expect excuse me 12 to 18 dollars per day per, per each adventure guide, guide. Right. right now i haven't really talked about the adventures guide adventure guide that was what i was going to talk about at the end but i have yet to find an adventure guide that i didn't think was worth twice that they go out of their way to make sure that you have the best trip and that you are as comfortable as possible and that you have every single thing you need Pete has told a story more than once where he was suggesting he was standing outside someplace and he it was a little chilly and he said he would love a cup of coffee and the next thing you know he turned around and there was a cup of coffee in his hand. And we've been on trips when it got to be a little chilly and without asking the guides went and got hot chocolate for everybody. So it's one of those things that you don't know how valuable are till they, you see how valuable they are. I would also suggest that there will be on your own time in several of the places that you go. And I would suggest that you spend some time doing some research, whether it's guidebooks or on the internet or reading other people's trip reports for your on your own time. A restaurant suggestion, a store carrying something that you might not be able to find at home, a museum that you didn't know about. Uh, you might just want to wander around but mm -hmm. at least you'll know which way to wander if you do a little research on your own. Also, don't be afraid to ask the adventure guides. They always have uh, suggestions for dinner or something to see outside of the adventure that might not be included that you think, well, I didn't get a chance to see that museum or something like that. The adventure guides would help you with that for sure. This brings to me to my next topic. Um, I'm always asked, well, I don't want to do that. Am I going to be forced to hang glide, not hang glide, zip line? Am I going to be forced to whitewater raft? Am I going to be forced to ride a bike? You are not required to participate in any activity in which you don't want to. Did that come out right? You don't have to participate if you don't want to. That's better. Um, the only hard and fast rule is that you have to be at the transportation when you move from one city to another. Other than that, you're not going to get a discount, and they're not going to give you a refund if you decide to, to not whitewater raft, but you don't have to do it. And almost always, there's another activity or something around for you to do while somebody else is doing something else. 
I will give you an example. When John and I went to England and France, both times, um, excuse me, I'm going to take a drink. My mouth got dry. Cut to me. We went to England and France. On We've been on two adventures. And in my opinion, based on what I wanted to see and do in Paris, there wasn't enough on your own time. So on both adventures, John and I have opted out of visiting Versailles. You go to Versailles in the morning and you tour, tour Versailles. And then there's a bike ride and then there's lunch and then there's the bus ride back. I decided that there were things in Paris that interested me more than that. So all you do is let the guides know I will not be at that bus in the morning. We will be on our own, but we'll be back at the hotel that night. Um, They're awesome about it. They're so great. So many times they want to help you. Well, what can we do to make it better? What can we do to fix it? Where would you like to meet us? Can we meet you somewhere else? And usually we just say, tell us where the next place is you guys will be. So maybe that day after Versailles, they come back to the hotel and then they just at six o'clock that night is dinner. Okay, we'll be there for right. to meet the group for dinner. We've made arrangements. Um, I know that on one trip there were several of us who had knee injuries. And they were going to walk through the forum in Rome. And they explained to us before we went in that the forum is uneven and there's um, broken pieces all over. And none of us thought we could do it. So all we did was ask where they would be when they came out of the forum. And we meandered our way over there and shopped and had ice cream and met them at the spot where they were done with their tour. So you're not you're not required to participate in anything that doesn't appeal to you or you don't think you're capable of doing. Make sense? Absolutely. All right. Uh, another thing I'd like to talk about is currency. You need to know what the currency is, where you're going, and I would suggest you arrive with some of that currency in your pocket. There's a discussion, well, can I use a credit card for everything? I would use a credit card for large purchases and... Meals of on your own meals, for sure, you can right. pay with a credit card and shop. I would look but. for a credit card that doesn't have a foreign transaction fee. But you still want to have a couple bucks in your pocket or a couple euros in your pocket in case you need to buy something at the airport or something. You just quick. might want to buy a bottle of water. It's also hard to haggle with a credit card in your pocket if you don't have cash in your pocket. And you'll, you're going to find uh, street fairs and farmer's markets where haggling is... Not expected. only allowed, but expected. Yeah, sure. I, you can't walk into a, a store and haggle over the cost of something. I mean, you can't walk into Louis Vuitton and haggle. They're not going to do it. But, you know, you go to the, the leather markets in Florence, they expect you to haggle. So, but I would land with some money in your pocket because your American dollars are useless as soon as you get off the plane. And again, if you want to take a taxi or buy a bottle of water, or you're going to need some kind of currency. The other thing is, if you need more currency, I understand that ATMs are the best conversion rate. So, and you should take out the maximum that the ATM will allow, because there is going to be a charge to use the ATM. Minimize, minimum, minimize, minimize the number of times you have to go to the ATM. <laughs> and how many? I got stuck. You did, and you had your fees. I love uh, the irony that you couldn't minimize the word minimize. minimize. <laughs> you couldn't minimize it. <laughs> I get stuck on the word aluminum, too. Um, one of the nice things that I tell people, and I will give you a couple of little hints that I tell my guests, at the beginning of your trip, I would find out where your guides are going to be after the adventure that you're on. Some go home to their home country, some are going on, some go other places. And I have found that the guides appreciate it when you tip them, you give them the gratuity in the currency of where they're going to go next. For example, if you find out that a guide is doing another guide in Europe, another trip, you give them euros. Mm -hmm. If they're heading back home to the United States, give them dollars. So you just want to make sure that you make it as easy on them as possible so they don't have to worry about exchanging. You're rewarding money. hard work, so it's just nice to, it's that, it's that extra step. Mm -hmm. I would also suggest that uh, ABD will provide you with a rather nondescript gratuity envelope. I have always found those to be lacking, so what I do is uh, I take two thank you cards with me. It's sometimes one of the hardest places to find thank you cards, believe it or not, is Disneyland. They kind of just don't exist, at least not within the confines of where you would be comfortable walking. So I suggest putting a couple of little thank you notes in your bag, and that makes the end of the trip easier. 
a little more personalized too than just the envelope with cash in it. Yeah, for sure. I have covered the hardware part of this, the booking. The let's talk a little bit before we go on to some of the sort of stuff of that happens in an adventure. Let's talk a little bit about the Dreams Unlimited Travel discount that we offer. When you book with us? We do. We offer a booking discount. Our booking discount is based on the cost of your adventure. We have a schedule of what the discounts are uh, and based on how much, what the cost of your adventure is so you can see what discount you would get. Other places offer booking discounts, but they usually come after you travel in the form of some sort of gift card that you have to use in a specific place. Dreams Unlimited Travel offers you a booking discount right off the top of what you're paying. You don't pay the booking discount amount. So what'll happen is you'll go to our website, dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, under Adventures by Disney, click Get a Quote, and there's actually a quoting system in place where you choose your adventure, choose the dates, put in a number of folks in your party, and then the next page will actually spit out the cost of that adventure as well as show you what your discount is and what your final price would be. So there's no guessing. There's no having to go back to a chart and look it up. You'll see right then and there. And there's no waiting. It comes off the top. Right. So you know exactly how much you have to pay for your adventure. There are some intangibles that come with booking at Adventures by Disney. Before we go into that, I just thought about something. Let's talk about what adventures we've been on. Because I know everybody in this room has been on some. Craig, which ones have you been on? I've done Backstage Magic and Central Europe. Very nice. Yes. Tracy, what about you? I have done Italy and Ireland and Backstage Magic Three times, I think. I think I've done yeah. three backstage magic. People who get hooked on those backstage magics go back over and over again because yeah. they're never the same right. trip twice. You always see something yeah. different. Always see something new. These adventures also change depending on the group. Right. The groups are never the same. The dynamics never the same. I can't remember off the top of my head all of the ones we have done. We are on sixteen now. Sixteen or seventeen. Sixteen or seventeen. Sixteen We've going done on seventeen for Italy, our... the Rome, Florence, and Venice trip. We've done that four times. Uh, More backstage magics than I can count. I can't. I, I've lost track of how many we've been on. Uh, we've been to Germany. We have been to England and France twice. We're going on Central Europe this summer. We're doing the Northern Italy and Switzerland trip. We've been to Ireland. However, John had a back injury, so let me rephrase that. We've been to Dublin. Yeah, we have been to Dublin. And <laughs> then we came home. We actually didn't have the adventure. Um, so, oh, we, we did the San Francisco backstage, and which we pushed up against a backstage magic. Yep, and enough. we have China planned for October 2017. Yep. So I, I think it's safe to say that we all love Adventures by Disney, that yeah. it's a great, play, great way for us to travel. We enjoy it. And, you know, we can't go through every trip and we can't list the, exactly what happens on every trip. But let's talk a little bit about what are the things that were sort of the big things of our trip? What do you remember from your Adventures by Disney trips? What were the things that stood out? Putting you all on the spot. Don't look at me first. Oh, I have a bunch of them. Yeah, I have a bunch of them too. Um, Tracy, I know one you have. You talk about all the time in Italy. Yeah. What happened in Italy? Seeing the Pope. Yeah. When we just happened to be in the right spot at the right time. And uh, we were supposed to move on to something else. And we saw all these people gathering in the square. And it was, and our, our walk-on guide, our step-on guide, Christina, was with mm-hmm. us. And she said, oh, the Pope is coming. And for her, well, the Pope is coming. This happens a lot. And I was like, no, wait, stop. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> the Pope is coming. For a girl who was raised Catholic, I've gone to Catholic school my entire education. The idea that, and it wasn't Pope Francis, who we have now. And it wasn't... Um, the Pope that I grew up with, Pope John Paul. John Paul, Paul thank you. It wasn't him, so ben. that would have been really. But it was Ben. No, I know. So. Oh, I thought it you was, were. It was I thought in, you were looking no, for me, no, and I. Was, I knew his name. I was just like it was the it was the interim Pope, <laughs> but it was still the Pope. So you. I was trying of, to whisper it. To as you. a Catholic girl, you have a lot of respect for oh, that. Oh yeah, it's the position for right, sure. Right, for and sure. It's the and we had and shopped. Um, they had brought us to a shop where you could get rosaries and different things. And I had purchased rosary for myself and one for my mom. And then it was, the Pope was coming. And I'm like, wait a minute. I can get these blessed by the Pope. So I decided I'm going nowhere. And my husband, who's not Catholic to say the least, (laughs) um, said, I'll stay with you. 
you know, whatever. Obviously, this is a big deal. We'll catch up with them somewhere else, like you were talking about. You're not going to do everything. We'll catch up with them. And our step-on guy, Christina, actually, first of all, a lot of people wanted to stay as well. So he came through, and he, you know, he did his thing, and he did his blessing, and I was got to hold the rosaries um, and have them blessed by the Pope. So it was a really big deal to me. And he, when he was all finished that part of it, I wasn't ready to go yet because he was still doing his thing, his Pope stuff. And I didn't want to miss anything, so everybody was leaving. It was time to get on the bus, and so Chris and I had decided we were going to stay. And Christina stayed with us. She said, I'm going to stay with you, and we'll get a taxi back too. And it's like, you don't have to do that. But she just felt this responsibility to us. She saw that it was important, and she stayed with us. And we just grabbed a taxi and met everybody back at the restaurant when we were all finished. And it was just one of those things that you could not have planned. Couldn't have planned. You can't You couldn't have dared to, to hope whatever happened. Right. And it was just the perfect storm. And everybody along the way, the, the guides, the step-on guide, the shop owner who rushed all of our orders to get them ready so we would have our rosaries out to have them blessed. Uh, it was just one of those, I don't know, I call it a magic moment. for, And it's something I'll never forget. And I think that, sure, other people there were there. Other people had you know, a chance to see the Pope. But I think one of the things that happens is the, we talk about these step-on guides, these local guides who come on the trip. Because of Disney, Disney seems to get the cream of the crop of these guides. And I know for a fact Christina has been on, Christina has been on more than one of these. We've been on more than one where Christina has been the local guide. And she told us, I ask for the Disney groups. I want to be part of the Disney groups. And I think because of her passion for it and her love of it, she treats those guests right. a certain way. So it's the sort of the sort of thing that comes together that you just couldn't plan. Right. And it just of kind of involved. it expands beyond and it's just it's the Disney. Some of it is just literally the name Disney. Yep. Some of it is the experience that these step on guides have working with the tour guides mm -hmm. and the respectable relationship they have and it becomes an intangible. There's just a feeling about it where everybody kind of rallied around to make sure that this is important. This is going to happen. Craig, what about you? Did you have one that? Oh, yeah. No, I, I've got lots. I mean, between the I told the story the last time uh, that I talked about the backstage magic, getting to see Conan O'Brien walk right in front of us. And, you know, even beyond like some of the how special that trip was that I, I've said we've made friends on it. Uh, well, like the amount that we made, like I just had dinner a couple weeks ago with uh, one of the people on our trip that came into town. And during the Star Wars uh, half marathon that's coming up, we're meeting a bunch more. So it's, again, those friends that you make on these trips, that's it, it, it's really, really meaningful. You, you hear it from us, especially saying you're going to make you're going to make lifelong friends. It's actually true. But. Uh, the Central Europe trip specifically, I just more and more as time moves on, I just think back to it, like how some of the moments that I'm so incredibly lucky, like hearing uh, you see a lot of Sound of Music stuff on that trip and hearing about how you see the gazebo that was in the back of one of the shots that, you know, they recreated on a soundstage for it. But you hear that you're not allowed in the gazebo. You just get to look at it. And well, uh, you know, that's part of the access ABD gives you. You get to be the only group that goes in. And they chose Kylie and I to be the first people to go in and did this whole little shtick of it. Cause did we you were leap the, around the edges? Uh, we we fake leaped. We posed <laughs> for a leap. But getting we to... Fleeped. We fleeped. <laughs> fake leap. That's fake leap. <laughs> it's, it's a word. Use it. Um, but doing something like that. And then uh, the guides listening to our feedback and... Uh, hearing that we all wanted to go up to Hitler's Eagle Nest, and that wasn't part of the trip, but they heard it, and then all of a sudden, uh, saying, "Well, whoever wants to go, we'll take you up the next morning," and making that happen, and having one of the most spectacular views I've flat out ever seen in my life. Just, it, it's all these moments that I would have never expected to actually happen, and without without these vacations, this stuff wouldn't be happening. I yeah. agree. Kevin, what about you? You said you have a bunch. Can you narrow it down to this um, one? Yeah, there's a, cu a couple I can think of. Um, first off, I'd have to say a lot of the times on these trips, we've 
put the trip together, and we're on the trip with people who are traveling with us. So I get to watch Our groups that we've other been people experience things. And even when I'm experiencing it for myself, I get a great deal of pleasure out of watching other people get to see these things. Um, I think probably one of the most recent highlights is I worked very hard, and for a couple of years, I wanted to be in the Disneyland Magic Kingdom on the 60th anniversary. And right up until the week before, I've since been told that there was a possibility that we were going to go to California Adventure on the 60th anniversary. That didn't happen. And for the rededication and the performance by Richard Sherman and Ashley Brown from Mary Poppins, we were we walked from where we were out into the hub at Disneyland, and there was nothing but a sea of people. And I don't know how they did it, but they got us all in a line, and they wound us through this area, and we got to sit directly behind the Girl Scouts that had been invited to be the recipients of the Million Dollar Dazzle, the Million Dazzle or Fizzle, Frazzle, I don't remember what the name of it was. I was kind of speechless. It was a Million Dollar They won, yeah, volunteers. Frazzle, I don't yeah. know. We were seated right there. We were as close as we could possibly get. I was 10 feet from Dick Van Dyke. And I thought to myself, how did you get here? Right. You know, you went to school to be a kindergarten teacher. How did you end up here? What good things have you done in your life that you're at the 60th anniversary seated 10 feet from Dick Van Dyke? You must have done something. I must have done something good because I'm one lucky sucker. Um, personally, I've gotten to see things that I always assumed that I would die without seeing. I got to see the statue of David. Mm-hmm. And to me, that was that was never real. That was something that you saw in a photo album. That was not the something. Eiffel Tower, the Colosseum. I, I've stood in the Colosseum. Right. Did you think to yourself, I'm never going to see I love the form, walking through the form. I and I was shocked at how amazing that was. Yeah. Like, I thought you think, oh, okay, we're walking through it's the rubble, form today, right? blah, 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 blah. But then you get there and you realize, oh my God, like I am. I'm walking ground. Right. We walked over a bridge the last time. We had done a food tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not going to get all the details right. But part of the food tour was you walked out onto an island. I believe it was true. I'm not going to say what I think it is. But we walked over a bridge. And they said, this bridge hasn't changed since Caesar and Cleopatra walked across it. And this is where their summer villa was. So they used to walk into the city of Rome over this bridge. And I'm going to guess the bridge was 20 feet long. And it was not the world's most beautiful bridge. But you stood there and you thought, I'm on the bridge that Caesar walked on. It's pretty awesome. That's pretty... pretty amazing um i've made lifelong friends i have you know besides being clients that i book on other trips i have made lifelong friends that i just feel so lucky to have i've gotten to go places and do things i also have said this before i am shocked at how my world view has changed by venturing outside the united states i lived a very insulated life growing up We didn't have money to go outside the United States. We went to Niagara Falls when I was a kid. That was as far as I got outside the U.S. Um, As an adult, I've gotten to visit other parts of the world. And it changes your view. It changes your view of what the world is. The world no longer seems small in just your backyard. And I feel very lucky to have that experience also. And you realize that uh, for as different as it may seem we are, we're really not that different. We're not. We're really not that different. Excellent. You know, we all do the same things. Was there anything else you wanted to add from your list? That was the intangible part of it. I wanted, to very... make, I wanted to put that more as stories than sort of, you know, talking about it. I think that that's the best way to express it is our stories of the things that you just can't talk. You just can't list. We took list. a bus ride in Italy one time. And we've talked about this on other shows where we had to go up and down this mountain. <laughs> and we were terrified, but I don't know that I have ever laughed oh harder. My God, still. It might have been nervous laughter, but I've never laughed I think harder. it was we were all sure that this was our last moments on earth. 
and that if we were going down, we were going down laughing, That's right. and at least we were all together. It's the funniest, funniest trip. Funny. Ever. I can still sit back and just think about it. Chris and I can talk about it and put ourselves in fits because it was literally one of the funniest, funniest experiences of my life. I, I think the thing you remember, besides the pictures you take, the things you remember are the people and the laughter. Mm-hmm. You are, you're a group of strangers who have since become family, and you're in a foreign land. And you kind of only have each other, and you get the laughter's contagious. Agreed. Excellent. Well, thank you, Kevin, for putting all that work together. I really appreciate it. I hope you folks got some insight into booking an adventures by Disney Vacation. Kevin at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you know, if you watch the show each week, we like to end it with what we call our agent spotlight. And this week we are highlighting Dorothy Bond. Dorothy lives in Plano, Texas with her husband and two dogs. Uh, she has three grown children and two grandchildren. In her free time, Dorothy loves to read, watch movies, go on long walks, babysit the grandbabies, and travel. Dorothy first visited Walt Disney World in 1988. There was so much to see and experience. She couldn't possibly do it all in one trip. Now, almost 30 years later, she's visited more times than she can count. It never gets old, and she and her family make it a point each trip to experience something they say they have never done before. There's always something new. Dorothy also loves cruising and is a Platinum Castaway Club member, having sailed on each of the four Disney Cruise Line ships, and she's very much looking forward to the launch of the two new ships in a few years. She's also been to Disneyland. Alani has enjoyed several trips with Adventures by Disney. Dorothy specializes in Walt Disney World, Disney Cruise Line, and Alani Vacations. If you're interested in working with Dorothy Bond, she can be reached at Dorothy at DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. Go ahead and spell it, Tracy. D-O-R-O-T-H-Y. At DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. Uh, Great conversation about Adventures by Disney. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching at home. We truly appreciate it. We hope you have a great week, and we hope you have a great vacation.